So the second song I want to do is called Excellent Greatness. Somebody say Excellent Greatness. The Bible talks about how we should praise the Lord for his excellent greatness. And so I'm going to say praise ye the Lord. And all I need y'all to do is say, hey. Can y'all do that? <laughs> See, it's simple. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, y'all sound so good. I might have to sample that and just... So go ahead, hit it for me. I keep doing that. I'm like, I got a DJ for once. Give it up for my DJ for once. Ah, yes. I'm in New York. Feel good. God is good. Somebody say Jesus. Say Jesus. Now say he's my savior. He's my savior. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, praise him according to his excellent greatness. He's worthy to be praised, worthy to be praised. I will not be silent because he's worthy to be praised. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, praise him according to his excellent greatness. I give praise to the most high, Jesus. And you can make that show rise in that low ride. Then turn to that Lambo. I know, right? That ain't the way I'm trying to go, guys. Cause after I die, I'm gonna be so fly, like so fly when he returns. So I don't want to blow tries. If he's turned, I wanna take advantage. Don't so wanna hurt God, keep the bandage. Keep the hungry, gotta feed the families. We did that shit with that charge of manage. I know the truth. So my life is model after it. I'm after God, charts so I'm running full throttle after it. Trillion reasons to praise God, can keep a bottle back to it. I'm a factory thinking out these praises. They got some immaculate. It grips my heart so I can't help but put it in my heart. I don't think so hard about it. Can't stop it when it starts. It's abundance so my pen leaks and my mouth speaks about it. One turn the other cheek so we can live eternally. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him according to his act. Let me hear you say, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him according to his excellence. Because he's worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. I will not be silent. He worthy to be praised. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him according to his excellence. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. My praise be turned up. I ain't waiting on heaven. Let the devil in severance. Climb a high in Mount Everest. Jesus Christ, get you leverage so I can win souls. Make a brethren. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Out of dirt, from the ground, he made a human being. Same human being. Sin when he ate from the tree of God. Loves us so much, he sent the sun to bleed. So we can be redeemed. Who on earth can do that? Nobody. Probably turn blue black from just trying to find a cure for the common cold. No one on this planet can fully satisfy your soul. I'm grateful he created us for his pleasure. In the mirror, I see Phil. He sees me as his treasure. Praise God by playing trumpets, strings, tambourines, trumpets. Psalms 150 says, like everything that has been praise the Lord. Hey, praise ye the Lord. Praise him according to his set. Let me hear you say it. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. He's worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. I will not be silent. He's worthy to be praised. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Give thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ here tonight. Hallelujah. God is good. I can't help but praise him, amen. I love it. So in light of that, I want to do a song called Stadium Praise. Somebody say Stadium Praise. A lot of times, my life feels like a basketball game. It feels like... The game is tied, or a lot of times I feel like I'm down by two on the court. And I'm like, man, this game could go either way. But I know that long as God is for me, I know I'm always going to come out victorious. 
So it may look ugly and it might be like less than one second left on the, sh on the clock, fourth quarter, he's going to hit the buzzer beater. He always does in my life. I can never say that he has forsaken me. And that's why I praise God like I'm in a stadium. He gets me excited. Amen. So can we stand up? Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Come on, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. So it's going to be similar to the last song. I'm going to say, I praise God like I'm in a stadium. Stadium. And I'm going to say it again. And I'm going to say, so I call it stadium. Praise. And I need y'all to say, hey. <laughs> We're going to say A a lot. So A is good because he's the alpha and omega. So bam. That's how we just, you know, you can always say something. You can make anything stand for anything these days. It's just crazy. Go ahead, hit it for me. Hey. Hey. Hey, here we go. Hey, I praise God like I'm in those hands. Lifting up to them hands. Showing off of that brand. Have been repping that land. Y'all know what caught me that ticket. Cost more than a grand. Even ladies, they getting it. And they don't dance for no bands. Hype like when we get in that end zone. Think I'm crazy, I bing out. She the super dripping on. I went hard till I get sent out. Being full of that ghost. No drink in my throat. One touch of that cloak, and me hold no longer, bro. That's why your boys be jumping. Turn up like a big crumpin'. The Lord, the promise do something. And it's beat, I may thump and got those no scoop at the last second. It's them buzzer beaters. Got me mad, and we rush the court from the bleachers. We do not care about odds. All we care about is our guy. Going hard for my squad. He deserves all the applause. My guy is a big deal. Excuse me for my Z. It was merely head knowledge, now it's something I can feel. I praise God like I'm in a stadium, stadium. I praise God like I'm in a stadium. So I call it stadium, pray. Stadium, pray. Stadium, pray. Stadium, praise. I praise God like I'm in a stadium, stadium. I praise God like I'm in a stadium. So I'm going crazy in the crowd. Reaching for the clouds, 20 DBs loud, Jesus got me. All I had to do, try Christ. Now I'm living, highlight for everything he does, highlight. I'm a big fan, shine bright. Jesus got the best handles, he'll light them up. Candles, over is the champ. You ain't seen this mental, greatest of all time. Never sits on that pine, his plays blow my mind. Makes me press rewind. Four to the top titty cop, more like a top meal. Play jump over cars, Jesus. Jump it over here. Y'all don't understand what I've been through. Run a mile in my shoes. Been a lot of close call. Yeah, Christ takes care of my issues. Never been forsaken. No need for me to be faking. For my sins, I need to be faking. All of my sins have been taken by J. Christ on that cross. All my guilt has been tossed. Y'all's a big ball. Undefeated, no losses, get up out of my seat. Praise used to be we didn't get. Yeah, I used to scream at the TV. Now I praise God like I'm in the stadium, stadium. Praise God like I'm in the stadium. So I call it stadium, pray. Stadium, pray. Stadium, pray. Stadium, pray. Praise God like I'm in the stadium. Stadium, praise God, let the men stadium. So I'm going crazy, get the crowd. While I'm reaching for the clouds, 20 TVs loud. Jesus got me going. They say I'm doing too much. They want me to turn down. Haters get turned down. Your boy drama go clown. I want this man by everything around. Now I'm a fan around town with the plow. Christ lifted up the pounds. Changed my life, pull me off the ground. You would say the same if you were friends. Me about this life, you can't remain the same when you're really born twice. So what he saved me from, it makes me go. Dumb and dance, like I'm in a trance. Throwing up my hand till I go. No, praise God, I come in the stadium, stadium. Praise God, I come in the stadium. So I call it stadium. Pray, stadium, pray, stadium, pray, stadium, pray. Praise God. Like I'm in the stadium, stadium. Praise God. Like I'm in the stadium. So I'm going crazy in the crowd while I'm reaching for the voices. 20 TVs loud. Jesus got me going wild. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Lord. You are awesome. You are good. Amen. I'm hot. <laughs> we good or do I need to? All right, cool. So I'm going to take it like old school a little bit. I don't, oh, y'all want to sit down? I can do a slower song if y'all want. <laughs> we getting ready for rap fest. So, you know, I figure, you know, we get the blood pumping a little bit. So I was here at the sanctuary like, that was like three years ago, four years ago. Yeah, four. And you gave me a bunch of drums that I still use. You hooked me up. <laughs> So I'm going to do this song called Teeter Totter. I did it back then, and it was real fun when we did it. So y'all got to stand up. Y'all got to stand up again. The next song, y'all can sit down if y'all want, but this one, you got to kind of stand up to do it. And I'm going to um, tie my shoes somehow sometime soon, so I don't trip down there. Yeah, that would be bad. K-Drama does not perform at Rap Fest. Again, like, man, is it your will, Lord? Like, but um, all right, so here's how the dance goes. We're just going to go back and forth, back and forth, lean back and forth, back and forth, and they go up and down, hey, up and down, up and down, hey, up and down, like Tita Titus, Tita Titus, like Tita Titus, hey, and if you like, man, that's too much leg action, I got something for you, just do the arms, all right? God is good. All right, go ahead and hit it for me. I'm going to try to tie my shoe real quick. Oh, I mean, go ahead and hit it. T the ties. T the ties. T the ties. T the ties. Say T the ties. 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 The Lord touched my lips. Put his words in my mouth. And hey, Luke wants saints. These words I'm going to spit them out. I know where we be. Because I call my Lord Jehovah Jireh. And in case you don't know that, means he's my provider. Anything according to his will, he'll equip me with money, cars, beats, rhymes, all for his benefit. Highest word in my heart, so that I remember it. If I get famous, then my will, I surrender it. Aim is not to flame the fame, frame the flame. Dearly maintain the name that brings up for every name. So why refrain the gain of self, his pleasure, he came for pain. Died on the cross so that I'll never be the same. I confess my sins, become born again. Most Christians don't last that long. I believe in this word, that's why stability is strong. But they go, they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. They go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Like Tita Titus, Tita Titus, Tita Titus, Tita Titus, Tita Titus, Tita Titus. Tita Titus, Tita Titus, yo, it's only in his word that I'm stable. Christians are unstable, like three-legged tables. Let's admit, discipline isn't easy, though I make it look simple. You got to believe me, your boy, catches the plus the shows, waiting in the cold, feeling like an Eskimo, holy pockets, but I ain't headed to Check and go, shut some up, and I'll be the first to let you know. Can't be American Idol, my clay be aching, but I trust in a potter who mows me. No mistaking, sometimes I feel like a bad good. Wicked compasses to right, just as how that looks. Seem not to reap what they sow, and it seems like you won't pay what you owe, but I trust in your regard. This is how things look. I believe in every word, and that holy book, but they go back. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. They go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Like Tita Titus, 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 Tita Titus. Tita Titus. The flesh is never satisfied, and it's word of stable. Word has power. Him, I'm able to mortify, then it's up to Kate and eat a tire. Steaming itself higher, then my Lord's empire. Work God gave me the sin, ensure my stability. Fear of the Lord does I dwell in this facility. That obedience, I could not facilitate ministry. I would be worth make carnal rappers in the industry. Many don't seek his kingdom first. That's why many in the kingdom thirst. Because the effects of sin, only temporary. I try to be foe, but I still ain't meant to carry me through hard times. I cast my cares on Jesus. 
have a partnership. God really needs us, but we gotta put them first. That our rap ministries put them first. We'll become everything we're meant to be. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. They go up and down. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down like teeth. That's for the nine leg people. See the One more time, they go back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. Then they go up and down. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. Like see the tide. Like see the tide. Hey! We got one more? Can I do? Cool. Hi. Right. So, my last one I'm gonna do is called Get Your Weight Up. Somebody say, Get Your Weight Up. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, get your blessing. I mean, weight up. <laughs> and then turn to your other neighbor that you just neglected and be like, Neighbor, get your weight up. All right, so when we do the hook, this is like a spiritual workout song. So you're in the spiritual gym, you're resisting sin, and the more you resist it under his grace, the stronger you get in the spirit. And so here's what we're going to do. We'll be like, get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. And he got to point to somebody be like, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You could do it all night long. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like water boy. So you could do it. Go ahead, hit it for me. I mean, hit it. For, see, I'm, I'm going to get used to this soon. Probably by the last song tomorrow, I'm going to get used to it. <laughs> I'm having fun. If you love the Lord, make some noise. Let's all right, clap to the beat like, hey, 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 hey. Say, get your weight up. Say, get your weight up. If pain is weakness, leave in the body. I cry a black night. Trying to get my act right. Trying to get my pack tight. That might be the reason why I lost the last fight. I couldn't recall word of the one I'm trying to act like. People want to act like they don't want to feel me. Like everyone is chiseled. I got to bring the real me. The stretch marks, the ill me. Simple to filthy. Ain't what you expected. Get a refund. Feel me. But the body looking sluggish. Rappers want to thug it. Christians will descend. Hey, time they flesh is tugging. Anyone living holy sound familiar? What happened to being different? I thought we were peculiar. Folk can't tell the difference. Do the same things they do. Earth is so temporal. Eternal is Jesus. We need discipline. Gotta start resistance. Want to carry your cross? Then you gotta get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah, I get my way up. Get your way up. Get your way up. Get your way up. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I got the top trainer. Day day in my corner. Strategy on my mind. Leave them for the coroner. Think I'm shadow boxing. Crowd starts mocking. Not seeing my fight, even though they are watching, but they aren't paying attention. We don't fight against flesh. Suck best. Easy for me to pass on like a drug test. This mess, I'm attracted to. Trying to counteract it too. Like in the day, I'm acting cool. Then the night, it comes straight out the blue. Back then in the spirit, used to look puny. Scrub in the ER, like George Clooney. Suffering from malnourishment and dehydration. I didn't live for Jesus. I lived for this cessation. But that really depressed me. Empty side left me. Cut it so short lived. Now it doesn't impress me. Live for what's eternal. Live life on a bench press. Muscles don't come without resistance. So get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Oh yeah. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. 
you get to it. This sin is easier to resist. Sin that doesn't mean much. You wouldn't do it no way, cause that's not your lust. What's the thing that competes with Jesus for your heart? The sin that attracts you, ranks highest on your chart. Trust me, I've been there. Sometimes I'm still there. Overcome sin, but still have to peel layers of deep for the wrongdoing. So frustrating. Love God, but I wish to show in my patience. That's where the power comes. That's where the peace comes. That's where the fulfillment comes. That's where the peace comes. When you start working out your salvation with fear and trembling, I call it formation. So let's up the ante. Sin no longer amps me. Gotta read the manual. His word does the clamping. When I press towards God, I press away sin. Sin is the weight, and I'm bench pressing. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Oh, y'all can. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. My name is K Drama. Thank y'all so much. I'll be in the back afterwards if you want to chop it up. Holla at your boy. If he still has energy, we'll have him back up here at the end of this. I was looking at my wife. I was like, man, that was me. I would have been done after the first song. <laughs> Yo, for real. And you got to check it out. Go to his website, kdramamusic.com, and check out the videos. He has music videos. He has a lot of merchandise up there. Hopefully, you could purchase a lot of stuff from him today so he don't have to carry all this back on the plane. You know, they charge you extra for, for extra baggage. So you want to make sure that he goes back empty-handed. Amen? Amen. Cool. So we're excited. How many people are still excited? Amen. Just real quick, I want to share a, yeah, a little bit of excitement. Uh, we were able to get over to Rough Rider Radio this past weekend on Sunday night. That was pretty dope. You know, a different environment for us to be in, but we were able to share the gospel and, and let people know what we're doing. So that was really exciting. I was able to be on a WLIB with uh, WBLS WLIB with... Uh, Pastor Hezekiah Walker was able to get an interview on that radio station, so that was pretty dope. Uh, this morning, we were able to be on National Public Radio, a show called Here and Now, which is national. So that was exciting, really exciting. Right before coming here, I got a call from New York Times. They're going to be coming out tomorrow, hopefully, to do a story, which is good. They said... They said they've been trying to do something with hip hop in New York and they finally got an opportunity. I guess they're, they're kind of saying their event kind of looks a little legitimate so we can check it out and you know, get approval. So just pray for that you know, because we don't want the exposure. We want Christ to be preached. We want the gospel to be preached. So of course the exposure is what's going to help us. So we're not doing it for us. We're not doing it for numbers. As a matter of fact, Pastor Jose, correct me if I'm wrong. We're trying to discourage too many people from showing up, right? Because we don't want to go crazy and, and get thrown out of the park. But um, but we do want the world to know about Jesus. That's the ultimate goal. So we're really excited. I'm so excited to bring up my good friend, uh, Pastor Jose Cruz from New Birth Church. Uh, yeah, yeah, give it up for him. I think. Aside from his wife, I think I'm the next, I'm number two on text message with Pastor Jose Cruz. Um, we, you know, we, we chat all the time. I love this brother. He's been working hard for us, for Rap Fest. Uh, he's definitely putting in hours, after hours, um, even during vacation time. But the, the brother has a, a, a passion for souls, just like we do at Rap Fest, a passion to see people come to Christ and a passion for the inner city. So it's my pleasure to pass this mic over to Pastor Jose Cruz. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you guys. God bless you. If you love Jesus, put your hands together and give him a praise. That's cool. That was for me. But if you love Jesus, put your hands together. Stand up on your feet and give God some praise right now. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, I'm excited to be here today. Praise the Lord. Um, when Bert called me several weeks back, uh, he said, listen, I want you to speak at Rap Fest uh, the night before Rap Fest. Um, I took the invitation really serious. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. I said, well, you know, if, if, if I have the opportunity, then I want to be able to say something that would matter going forward. Amen. Uh, and, and something that would stay with you and stay in your heart and, and that you could, you know, just take forward. Uh, uh, as he said, I'm the senior pastor of New Birth New York Church uh, here in the Bronx. Praise the Lord. And uh, we're, some of them are here, just wave, wave your hands in the air and shake them like you just don't care. Oh, snap. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless K-Drama and his energy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, get your weight up. Praise the Lord. Somebody pointed at me. I was like, well, you got jokes. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you, uh, I came here to get insulted today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Uh, but it's, it's an honor and a, a privilege to be. I want to thank Bert and Alice Boca Chica for, for their love and confidence in, in our ministry, in, in my person. Amen. They've always been a support uh, and a counsel and a word of counsel in, in, in our ear uh, whenever it came to anything we were doing. And I want to thank Pastor George Martinez. Praise the Lord. I think this is the second time I come here to speak. I think the first time was for men's uh, a men's fellowship, praise the Lord. I, want, I just want to thank him for the confidence of allowing me to stand on his altar here. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, I, I want you to know right off the bat, God has a will. Amen. And you're part of it. Praise the Lord. I want you to look at somebody and tell them, God has a will and you're part of that will. Praise the Lord. Isn't that, isn't that just crazy? Doesn't that just blow your mind? God, the creator of the universe, amen. I say this so many times because every time I think about God and I think about his greatness and his power and just how great and mighty God is, right? The, the creator of the, I mean, I mean, he snapped his fingers and the, and, and, and the, tar, and the stars lit up, amen. He, he set the sun in its place. He created the heavens and the earth and this great and mighty God has a plan for our planet, amen, praise the Lord, for our universe, and you are part of God's plan, amen, you play an essential part in what God wants to do right now, amen, and it's important that you understand that because in leaving here today or once tomorrow's event is over, you need to understand what's next, praise the Lord. What happens after Rap Fest tomorrow? What happens after the next big event or the next big gig or whatever it is you're doing as, as you're going out and, 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 and ministering, praise the Lord. And I want to encourage you, and if I can offer you some direction real fast and some encouragement and some empowerment so you can move forward in God and accomplish the purpose for which God created you, praise the Lord, amen, because you were created with a purpose, you were created with a destiny, praise God, I don't, it doesn't matter what stages you stood on, I've preached to three, four thousand people, praise the Lord, amen, and I, I tell you right now, I found God, amen, not in the midst of three or four thousand people, I found God on a street corner speaking to a crackhead, praise the Lord, speaking to a drug addict, I've seen God more manifested there than I have in congregations and in multitudes. Praise the Lord. And, you know, and my heart burns and yearns for evangelism and outreach. It's, it's, the, it's kind of the core of our church. And we, 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 we kind of impose that and we, we, implement, we transplant that into everyone's heart. Amen. As they're coming in that, you know, evangelism isn't, isn't just for the people who are coming in. It's not part of just discipleship or new believers class, I think discipleship starts from the top down. Praise the Lord. Uh, it starts with me as, as, as the minister of my congregation and sowing into them that passion and that heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, um, let's open our Bibles real quick because I'll keep talking. I like to talk. Amen. I can't rap, but I can talk for days. Praise the Lord. So let's go to Mark chapter 10 real fast. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 10. If you have a Bible, phone, tablet. Praise the Lord. It's Mark chapter 10. When you all have it, say amen. Amen. And we're going to start reading at verse 17. Praise the Lord. And the word of God reads like this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the people of God say. 
And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? That's a good question. And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and your mother. And he said to him, teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him. Amen? Isn't, that's a powerful part right there. We usually skip over that. Jesus looked at him and loved him instantaneously. Praise the Lord. Jesus, looking at him, praise the Lord, loved him and said, and said to him, you lack one thing. Go sell all that you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Father, we thank you for your word, and we just ask that you would just minister to our hearts here today and minister to the lives. that Father, speak first to me, amen, and minister to my heart and convict my heart, and then the lives of the people that are listening to us here today, Lord, that we will leave here, my God, commissioned by you to accomplish the purpose and destiny for which you set us forth. Uh, on this earth, Father God. Right now, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for God one more time. I've been fighting with this message since yesterday. And I was like, I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> praise the Lord. And you would think it would be easy, you know, being that, you know, uh, you know, evangelism is so important to me and to my church. And I'm, I'm ministering at the night before Rap Fest. Obviously, you speak about evangelism, uh, but I, I think it changes when we tend to come into a church context and we're speaking to ministers and we're trying to empower and engage people who are saved, amen, to go out and make a difference for Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. It's a different context. Praise God. And not everybody always receives that the same. Amen. Because uh, everybody thinks they're a good Christian. Amen. Most people. Most people. Amen. Most of you are like, I'm doing a pretty good job at this being safe thing. Praise the Lord. I've had a couple of slips, but for the most part, I get it done. I get it in. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, so it's very hard then to come in and then let you know, listen, well, this is what God wants you to do. And then you come face to face with something. And you're like, oh, my God. Now I gotta go. This guy just ruined my life. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. But if anything, I want to ruin your life right now so that then God can put it back together by the time I finish preaching. Praise the Lord. Amen. God loves broken pieces. Praise the Lord. God loves to take broken pieces, put them back together. So I just want to just, let's just drop a bomb right now real quick, and then we'll, we'll, we'll fix it, hopefully. <laughs> and if not, just come see Bert. Uh, <laughs> praise God. Amen. Uh, and we're kind of living in this time in the church, not in the world, in the church. Uh, we live in this time of hyper grace. And there's this hyper grace movement taking place and everybody's kind of living life and having a good time in church. And, and, you know, and there's no real accountability. There's no real, amen. And if you have a grace, I'm sorry, I got the mic. Amen. You come next year. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, and, you know, and we're, we're struggling with seeing Amen. What it is really that God wants to do. Because in, 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 the, in, in the movement, we're losing power. Amen. As we're moving forward, we're losing power. We're losing authority. We're losing influence. And influence is important. Praise the Lord. Because it, it's our influence. It's Christ in us manifested to the world that will convict the world of its sin. Praise the Lord. He says, when I be lifted up, and of course he's talking about the cross, but I believe that means that when you lift up Christ in your life, people are drawn to you. Praise the Lord. People come because they want to know what's happening inside of you because they want some of what you got. Praise the Lord. And in, in, in that process, praise the Lord, uh, I, I think we were, we've lost relationship with God. Amen. Because we've developed relationship with so many other things. Praise the Lord. And I'm not going to get into doctrine or anything like that, but this might be a little rough. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, and I want to talk to you about the cost of salvation. Amen. And we come, and I know salvation is free, yes. Amen. Salvation is free, in essence. 
in practice, it will always cost you something. Praise the Lord. Nobody in the Bible, I don't care, you want to sit down and go through the Bible, when we'll start at Matthew and at Revelation. Nobody came to Christ without sacrificing something important. Praise the Lord. These guys were walking away from careers. They were walking away from family, jobs. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody that came to Christ had to pay a price personally. There had to be a physical dissection inside of them that showed God that they were ready to take on the commission of following him. Praise the Lord. The problem with many of us is that we don't want to let go of anything. We want to serve God. We want the benefits of salvation. But we also want to cling on to those things that we love and crave and desire. We hold on to, 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 to bad relationships. We hold on to friendships. We hold on to passions and desires. Praise the Lord. And these things creep into our faith. And then we find ourselves trying to justify them in order, amen, hallelujah, to be saved and still live like I'm lost. Praise the Lord. Amen. And it was about, uh, I think it's Robert Pierce, the founder of World Vision. And this is, this is my favorite quote, and it's something that I live by. He said, man, he said, I want my heart to be broken by the things that break the heart of God. Amen. I want, I want to be so in sync with God that when God, God's heart breaks, I want, I want my heart to break. I want to be connected to where God is. Praise the Lord. And I, I connect so much with that. It was about a year and a half ago. I was struggling, you know, I was struggling in, in my identity in God. That's crazy, right? You figure I've been pastoring for about five years now, praise the Lord. And a year and a half ago, I was struggling. And because, you know, I was diving into God's word. And as I went into the word of God, my life resembled these men. My life didn't look like this. And it caused me to have to ask myself as a minister of the gospel, some real serious questions. And I went as far as to ask God, God, am I truly saved? Do I really, do I really have a grasp on what salvation really is? Or have I bought into a fabricated salvation that has been sold to me? Praise the Lord. Listen, salvation is more than just coming to the altar, lifting up your hands, crying, and repeating a prayer. I know people that have done that ten times and are still lost. Amen? Salvation is about sanctification. It's about justification. I'm not going to get into that. too. Amen? Let's keep it simple. Praise the Lord. Amen? But salvation is a process by which God begins to transform you. Amen? And that's the problem with cheap grace. Praise the Lord. Cheap grace, amen, hallelujah, robs you of the power of God's transformative ability. Praise the Lord. Real grace will lead you to total repentance and total transformation. Praise God, because when you, listen, 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 you can't, you can't come face to face with God and stay the same. You just can't. There's no way you can see God, receive God's grace, and walk out of here and go do the things you used to do. Because real grace transforms you. When you come face to face with God, your heart, your mind, everything is impacted by your experience in him. Praise the Lord. So I want to challenge you today. Praise the Lord. It was about a year and a half ago. I was just struggling. I was asking all these questions. I had so many questions. Uh, in my pastorship, which is crazy, right? You think, man, that must have been an interesting time at church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And it was because I took my church through this journey of asking ourselves the right questions. Because sometimes we ask the wrong questions. Praise the Lord. You know, God, I need this, and God, God, I need $100 for the rent, and God, I need $25 for the insurance, and God, I need, I need food for the refrigerator. And, and we ask God for such silly things. Praise the Lord. Everybody's looking at me. What do you mean, silly? Yes, it's silly. You know why? Because he's God. He's God. Look at somebody say, he's God. He knows what you have need of. He doesn't need you to remind him. He needs you to be obedient. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're wasting time and pray asking God for milk and cookies and, 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 and 
And God is like, is that how small I am for you? Praise the Lord. The Bible says, set your eyes on the things above and everything else will be added on. Praise the Lord. God says, chase after holiness. Chase after a relationship. Seek me and watch how I will provide all of your needs. Praise the Lord. See, that's why the Spirit intercedes for us because we don't know how to pray. So while we're praying for milk and eggs, the Spirit has to go back and say, listen, he's praying for milk and eggs, but don't listen to him. <laughs> this guy needs a breakthrough right now. He needs an encounter with God. And once I eat milk and eggs, Lord, the Spirit is like, shh. Right? Because we get confused and, 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 and we can't see God for his greatness. Praise the Lord. And I was struggling and this was the verse that messed me up, and I'm going to share it with you. It was Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. And it was Paul speaking. And look what he said. He said, I speak the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. Right? Paul's praying now. He's like, listen, I'm not lying. My conscience, I have conviction through the Holy Ghost that what I'm saying is true. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race. That bugged me out. Because I, 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 I had never meditated on that scripture. And when I meditated on that scripture, I said, God, I can't do that. Paul, what Paul was saying was, if I had the ability to do so, I would let my life be condemned to hell so that my people could be saved. That's, that's really powerful. Amen? That's a level of security in God that many of us need to strive to be. That is a level of Christ. Only Christ, listen, listen, only Christ had gotten to the point where he had the power and the authority to lay his life down so that you could be saved. Paul had reached a level in God, amen, where he had, oh, praise the Lord, where his heart had been so transplanted, his mind had been so transformed. That's why he says, listen, I no longer live, but Christ lives inside of me. Oh, amen, praise God, hallelujah. When he says this, he is, he is manifesting the essence of Jesus Christ. And he says, man, let my life be laid down so that they can be saved. Praise the Lord. And when I read that, that blew me away because I knew that wasn't me. And I went back and I said, God, I, don't, I, I, want, I want to know how to get there. How do I get to the place where I'm ready to lay my life down so that everybody else can be saved? How do I get to a place in God where I have the power and the will within myself, amen, to sacrifice my own desires so that others may receive hope, may, may receive hope. praise the Lord? And it was a struggle, and I struggled for a little while with it, praise the Lord. And I battled with it, and I, I, and I began to dig deeper into scripture. But I want to challenge you today, praise God. I want to challenge you to press into the presence of God, to chase hard after him. Praise the Lord. Listen, this isn't, I don't, want to, I don't know how to say this. At the end of the day, this is about heaven. Listen to me, church. At the end of the day, this is about heaven. It's why I pastor. It's why Pastor E pastors. It's why Pastor Mark pastors. It's why Bert brought us for 20-something years. Because one day we're going to stand before the presence of God. And God is going to look at us and he's going to ask us, what did you do with what I placed in your hands? We're going to have to answer and say, Lord, here it is. Everything you gave me is not small. See, because the true evidence of salvation do you know what the true evidence of salvation is? It's called fruit. 
And the Bible says that every tree that does not bear fruit shall be cut down and thrown into the fire. I don't want, I don't want to be cut down. I want to make sure that I'm bearing fruit for God. And this is a, these are serious questions you need to ask yourself. This in your life, I don't know why we don't talk about this every Sunday. Your life depends on these questions, on the answers to these questions. What fruit are you producing for God? Whose life are you changing? Whose life are you impacting by what God has placed in your hands? What are you doing to change the world? What are you doing to change your home? What are you doing to change your community? What are you, how are you invested in God's kingdom? What bricks are you laying down? Amen. Hallelujah. For your mansion in heaven. These are real questions, people. And I want to convict you. I want the word of God to convict you because I want you to leave here. And I want you to go back home and say, man, what can I do for the kingdom of God? What can I do to make a difference? Oh, I need a prophetic word. Shut up. Read the Bible. This is prophetic word. Praise God. This is prophetic word. If anybody speaks to you and is not in here, it is not prophetic word. This is prophetic word. You want to know God, you want God to speak to you. Open up your word. Praise God. Start diving into the presence of God. Let God speak to you from the page of his own revelation. Praise the Lord. I don't know what God has for me. Real easy right now. Prophetic word. Get ready? I'm serious. I'm, I'm dead serious on this. Are you ready? Prophetic word. You want to know what God has for you? Lift up your hand. You know what God. You wanna, don't be scared. I'm not gonna do nothing crazy. You can lift up. You want to know what God has? For you? All right. This is what God wants you to do. Mark chapter 28, verse 19. Go throughout the world and make disciples. Praise the Lord. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to follow my law, my ways. Praise the Lord. That, Dios te bendiga. <laughs> You've been commissioned. There is nobody that is exempt from the great commission. Every church, mega or small, every individual, whether it be the church sweeper or the bishop of the council, everybody is subject to that ministry. We must preach gospel to everybody. Praise the Lord. Revelation. Did your hair stand up? Mine's dead. Praise God. Go. Now, how does this apply to you? Figure out how to do that to the best of your ability where you can do it all the time and as best as you can and go and do it as much as you can. Be loud, be creative, be retarded with it, get crazy with it. Go and do it all the time and start today. On your way home, figure it out. Praise the Lord. Go. Let God use you. You don't need a prophetic word. You don't need a prophet. You don't need the laying out of my hands. God has already commissioned you. Before the foundations of the earth, he already had you in mind. He set you apart. You are predestined by God to be here right now to hear his word so that you can stand up and do something for God. What are you waiting for? No, my life ain't right. Well, no kidding. Ain't none of us right. That's why we're here. I know I'm not right. I'm kind of crazy. That's why we're here. If we were right, God wouldn't need us. But it is in our weakness that God's grace, whoosh, praise the Lord, that God's grace abounds, praise the Lord. He says, therefore, when you are weak, you are strong. Because when you can't do it, that's when I got to show up. Praise the Lord. That's when I got to sustain you. When you're about to fall, that's when I'm able to catch you. That's all. Praise the Lord. Because you can't get the glory. Because I'm a jealous God. And I don't share my glory with anybody. Praise the Lord. So if you're limping, praise the Lord. Because God's going to be your crutch. Praise the Lord. 
Don't be afraid because you limp. Walk with authority because you limp. Because now you know that God is beside you. It is in the most trying times of your life, the most difficult moments of your life, that God is closest to you. Praise the Lord. The Bible says God is close to the brokenhearted. Praise God. Go. Make a difference for God. Praise the Lord. Be a tree that bears fruit. Praise the Lord. Go and bear fruit. Listen, listen, your life depends on it. You hear me, church? Your life depends on what you do right now. Because if you think you're going to get to heaven and have nothing to show and still get into heaven, I got news for you. Selfishness is the greatest sin. And you must give by grace what by grace you have been given. Praise the Lord. So if you think you can hide your gift and you can bury it like the guy with the one talent who buried it because he, he was too afraid to use it. And when, when the master came back, he said he took away his talent. Praise the Lord. Every tree that does not bear fruit shall be cut down and thrown into the fire. Preach the gospel. Listen, don't get caught up in church. I'm, I'm going to get in trouble now. See? Come see Bert. <laughs> Don't get caught up in church ministry, in the politics of ministry. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. This is an advice from a pastor. My church is here. Don't get caught up. Listen. The least important thing, amen, for your salvation, amen, is positions and titles. Praise the Lord. Did you know that you can lead without having a position? just because you have influence, just because God has blessed you enough that God has given you enough grace and honor and wisdom that you can lead from your bench. Praise the Lord. Listen. Break out of your four walls. This is not where ministry is going to happen. This is where you'll get commissioned. This is where you receive. But where ministry is going to manifest in your life is out there. Praise God. Some of you are like, God, I want you to use me to heal people. And you ain't been to a hospital yet. You ain't stepped foot in the emergency room to pray for nobody. Faith without action is dead. This is not where it's at. Listen to me, church. I'm going to show you the Bible right now. You're going to take my word for it. This is not where it's at. This is, fellowship is important for accountability and to build up the saints. Praise the Lord. But if you're looking for ministry in the bench, you're not going to find it. Praise God. You're not going to find it. Look what Paul says. Romans chapter 15, starting at verse 20. He says, it has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known. <laughs> Woo, praise the Lord. Paul planted churches all over the place. He says, it has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known, so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. Rather, rather, as it is written, those who were not told about him will see, and those who have not heard will understand. Praise the Lord. Not here. You want to be effective in God? You want God to manifest? Yes, we do all cause. Yes, we like laying hands, and that's great. But you've been coming to the altar for like a month already. Stop. <laughs> stop it. Look at somebody tell them, stop it. Amen? God already heard it. He's, he's working on it. Stay faithful. Stay committed. Do what you got to do, and it'll happen. Praise the Lord. I mean, how many words do you really need? I mean, <laughs> praise God. I want to read one last thing before I close. I'm going to close. I hope. Romans, again, Paul. See, we read Paul, but we don't read him in this context. 
Paul was straight up street. If Paul was here, Paul would be leading up Rap Fest. Paul would not be in here talking to you. The only time Paul addressed the church was to correct them because they were being stupid. Uh, stupid is okay? Yeah. Amen. That's the only time Paul had to address the church. It's when they were doing some nonsense and he had to come in as a spiritual father and he had to co come and correct some things. But Paul's ministry was spent in the streets. Just like Jesus Christ. The only time Jesus goes into the temple, he turns it up. <laughs> right? He's just like turning tables up. He's mad. He's smacking people all around because if Jesus was here today, do you know how many churches would be messed up? There would be benches all over the place in every church in the Bronx, in New York. Because we've become so religious that we've lost touch with the power of our faith in action. And faith in action takes place out there. It takes place out there when we're walking and we're, we're, we're living out our faith and our salvation in Jesus Christ. And it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you friends. It's going to cost you family. People are going to criticize you. But listen, it is worth the cost so that you can receive the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because it's those same people that turn away from you now that you're going to save later. When they see what God is going to do in you. And I'm, I'm going to close right now. I'm sorry. I said that earlier. Romans chapter 10, verse 11. Starting at verse 11. He says, for the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. Praise the Lord. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all. Somebody say Lord of all. Bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Look what he says next. The next part is the dope part. That's the dope part of the word. Listen. How then will they call on him who they have not believed? How are they to believe in him who they have, not, who have never heard? How are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? We messed up somewhere in one of these instructions. The church is stuck somewhere in one of these sentences. And we got to break out and move on to the next step. Praise the Lord. He says, how are they going to believe? How are they, how, how are they to believe in him who they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. For they, they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed? What he has heard from us. Who has believed our report? Praise the Lord. So faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Jesus Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed, they have not. Praise the Lord. How are they going to be saved if we're busy here singing songs? How are they going to be set free if we're busy trying to get our music contract together? How is the world supposed to see Christ when we're more concerned with the hip-hop industry accepting Christian hip-hop than we are with them knowing Christ? And I don't want to, I, I'm sorry. Listen, Jesus said it. They haven't received me. They will not receive you. For the gospel is craziness to those who are perishing. We have to stop wanting to be accepted and we have to learn how to stand for the truth. We have to set our own standard. We have to be the light. You, you, think, they accept, you think they want somebody in their faith constantly telling them you're a sinner? You're going to hell. You're a sinner, you're going to hell. Both at the same time. Listen, church, listen, people, listen, ministries. We have a higher calling. We have a higher responsibility. Lives depend on what we do. Praise the Lord. It isn't about lyrics and it isn't just about writing. It is about ministry. It is about the word of God. Amen. That is alive and oh, praise the Lord. And it is sharper than a double-edged sword. Praise the Lord. When, we when you stand on that stage tomorrow... 
Yeah, you at Ratfest. But you're a minister of the gospel. You're a minister first and a rapper second. I don't care what anybody says. Remember that. Remember that your integrity and your character carry your ministry. And if your conduct and your actions off stage do not reflect what you are on stage, I promise you that no one will see you. Because Jesus told Nicodemus, how you can't see? He said, you can't be safe unless you're born again. He said, how am I going to be born again? I, he said, you can't see, you're blind. And you can't see because you can't understand. So your ministry is fruitless because people can't understand the words that are coming out of your mouth. Because as they're coming out, they are not a reflection of Christ. They are a conviction to you. Praise the Lord. You got to go back. Check yourself. Check your life. Check your heart. Check your mind. And remember who you're doing this for. And remember that one day, I'm done. One day, very, very, very soon, burnt real soon, you're going to be standing before the throne of God. God is coming soon. Listen, this is a rally. This is the last rally. This is a war cry. Jesus Christ is coming back. And we're going to be standing in front of his throne very soon. What are you going to say when he asks you, what did you do with what I put in your hands? God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Awesome word. You know, I, I understand his heart for, for souls and evangelism. and Because God has placed that, that same heart and burden and I for the streets. And I know every minister that's going to be ministering this weekend that that's your heart as well. And, you know, God has given us different callings. Some of us are worship leaders, some of us are rappers, or some of us are preachers. But it's all for the same purpose. It's to reach souls. It's for someone to get saved, to, to someone to enter the kingdom of God. You know, and as he's preaching, I, I'm like, you know, I... My mind works differently, I guess. I don't know if that's normal or not, but my work, my mind works a little different. As he's preaching, I'm picturing a race, not running, a car race. You know, the, those car races, Indy 500 kind of race. And these cars, they're just going and going and going, miles and miles and miles and miles and per hour. But at some point, they have to stop because they have to do repairs. The wheels have to get changed. They gotta fill up. They gotta, you know, tweak something. And then that doesn't take long. That process, the, the pit stop people, they're trained to do that in seconds. And they change everything and that car zooms right back out and goes right back into the race. So that's what church should be for us. We're in this race and we're running we're running and, and we're going on and when we come on Sunday, this is like our pit stop for our tires to get changed, our, our, our you know, nuts and bolts to be tightened, you know, our gas to be filled up. And it's not for us to stay stagnant in the church, it's for us to continue the race on Monday when we go to work and continue on that race and then come another service day. Some of us have service on Tuesday. You know, so we did so much from Sunday for, to Tuesday for the gospel that we got to come again to the pit stop. And we got to change our tires and we got to fill up and we got to continue on this race. But that's not what church has become to some of us. You know, some of us have become gluttons. And we just come and we sit and we receive and then we go home and say, that was awesome. And we sit on our couch with our remote, our spiritual remote. That was awesome. Come Monday and we eat again and, oh, that was great. And now we're like, ugh. And we're just sitting there. But God has called us for so much more. You know, where are you pouring out? What are you doing every time that you come to church and get filled up with what a pastor preaches, what the worship leaders pours out? What are you doing with it? Where are you pouring out? And, and it's, it's funny because it's no coincidence. God knows everything. 
even though sometimes I don't make sense and you don't make sense, but God puts it all together and we both make sense. I had said, let not the waters in you be stagnant. Let it pour out so God can pour back into you. And today I want to I want to place that challenge on you. Have you been pouring out or you just have been pouring in and you know what? He can't pour in no more because you're just there's no more room. And you're just there. Where have you been pouring out? What has God called you to do that you haven't been doing? And I challenge you today to say, God, if you can use anything, Lord, use me. Take my hands, Lord. Take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord. Speak through me. But use me. Use me anyway. Use me in my dance. Use me in my rap. Use me in my praise. Use me in my words. Use me, you know, some people have this eloquent way of praying. And this, use me in my prayer. And I encourage you today, take what God has placed in your hands and say, God, use me to save someone, to impact someone's life. And I don't want to close today without asking all the ministers that are going to be ministering tomorrow at Raphis to come up. Just right here up front. All of everyone who's going to be ministering tomorrow. Because we want to pray over you. And anyone else who's here who knows that they have a calling, but they've been sitting on it. And if, if, you, if you know that God has placed something in your heart to do something, to do something for him, and you don't know what it is, and you keep praying, Lord, what's the will? What's your will in my life? Lord, what, what, what do you have for me? Lord, what's my gift? Lord, this, Lord, that. Well, you know what? Your gift is go ye into the world and preach the gospel. And if that's you today, I want you to stand as well. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray tonight that God just blesses these ministers for tomorrow. That God just doubly, triply anoint them. And that you may feel the power of the Holy Spirit upon your life. Knowing what you're called to do, how to do it, where to do it, when to do it, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you today, dear God, this evening, Lord, for you have spoken. Lord, your word has been preached, dear God. Lord, your anointing has been poured out. Your spirit has moved in us, dear God. Lord, I pray now, dear God, that your anointing continue to be poured out upon us, dear God. Lord, I pray for these ministers that tomorrow will be ministering, dear God, out in the street. Lord, I pray that they may see the people with your eyes. Lord, give them your eyes, your heart for those that they will be preaching to, speaking to, dear God. Lord, I pray, dear God, that they may realize, dear Lord, that it's you in them that has given this ability and this anointing, dear Lord, to go forth and speak, to go forth and rap, to go forth and pray, dear Lord. Lord, that they seek your anointing. They seek your guidance, dear Lord. Lord, no agenda tomorrow but what you have to do what you want to do what you want to say how you want to move dear God Lord I pray God that you give them a sensitivity to your spirit a discernment to your spirit a discernment to the cry of the neighborhood dear God Lord I pray dear God that you just put a protection over them dear God that you pour your spirit in a mighty way dear Lord that as they minister dear God you pour into them dear God Lord I pray dear God for strength dear God. I pray for boldness in the spirit, dear God. Lord, and for, Lord, those people that are standing that know, dear God, that they have a calling, dear God, but they've neglected that calling, dear Lord. Lord, I pray that you give them courage, dear Lord. I pray for strength, dear God. I pray, dear Lord, that your spirit, Lord, awaken in them, dear God, that which you have placed in their heart, in their soul to do. Lord, let there be an awakening going on in the soul, 
Let there be an awakening in their, in their inner spirit. Let there be a stirring of the spirit, dear God, within them, dear God, to go forth and do what you call them to do, dear Lord. Lord, you are God, dear God, that doesn't, doesn't leave anyone out, dear God. You include us all. You've called us all. You've given us all a purpose. You created us with a purpose, dear God. Now it's time for us to fulfill that which you've created us to be, dear God. Strengthen us, dear God. Lord, I pray for your anointing, your Holy Spirit. I pray, dear God, that your Spirit leads, dear God, and that we may follow, that we may be obedient enough to follow that which you've called us to do. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask